Hi, this is Amanda from the Hong Kong Migo Network. Here with me is the Nokia N900. And I've loaded the Migo 1.2 Developer Edition on a micro SD card and booting it up with the U boot bootloader. This particular version is for the Migo conference, which is now holding in. San Francisco and this developer edition of Mega 1.2 is intended for developers to uh, develop applications for the Mega platform and it is not intended for the mass market users yet and this is not to be confused with the um, Mega Hamilton Operating system which will be included in the Nokia N9 or N950. Uh, those rumored devices leak in the past weeks. Uh, the Mega Hamilton operating system is actually uh, the MIMO 6 and it is supposed to be Mega compatible in some um, extent but it's not. A fully featured Migo operating system. And Migo 1.2 is still under development, and although it's released for the netbooks and IVI and other platforms, the handset um, version is still under development, and the developer edition is not completed yet. And this particular release is just to demonstrate the possibilities of deploying Migo applications um, so that developers can have a sense of how these can be done on a uh, handset like this which is already available for two years and can be easily accessible by anyone. So here we go. As you can tell from the nice picture from the background. This is the San Francisco release of the Mega 1.2 developer edition for the Nokia N900. Um, we have here a few um, commonly used applications like Gaula, SMS, Contacts, and Camera application. And this icon here brings you to additional applications menu. Uh, this is the browser, X-Terminal, Peregrine, which is an online chatting application. It's not working well yet, but has a very good UI. Settings, a mini web browser, which is based on GTK Plus framework. Um, although Migo is based on Qt, uh, GTK Plus applications are still supported, and this is a very good example. Photos application. Quad Bowling, Music Application, Mat Developer. Mat Developer is an um, application for developers to deploy and run applications from their PC using the Migo SDK or Qt SDK and to deploy applications remotely, wirelessly, via Wi Fi or any other uh, networking connections. QML Reddit, which is a Reddit next sharing website viewer uh, written in QML. Another page of applications we can see Boosted Widget Gallery is a, basically an example of a gallery of the mega widgets and controls. An application called has Vopus and uh, it's actually a Facebook client based on QML. Migo video player uh, is not working well yet uh, and the Canada application. So on this desktop we can have only one desktop here so far and we cannot add any widgets or shortcuts on the desktop yet. And I'm not sure whether this will be changed in the future, but the current design is like this. 
in the settings page and we can see the usual menu as we saw in previous releases and we can see that about my device about product and here's the build number of this release is not 1.2 yet and because it's not yet ready so let us launch the browser application the browser application is actually the Mozilla Firefox for mobile and this version bundled in this MIGO release is actually uh, 6.0 alpha 1 which is quite new because the release the stable release of Firefox for mobile is 4.0 and 5.0 is actually still in beta and now we have 6.0 alpha 1 for this release but actually there you cannot find a lot of differences between these version numbers and as usual the tabs are on the left and at the right hand side you can find the favorite button and back and for forward buttons and the settings button and as you can tell from the user agent string it is Firefox 6.0 alpha 1 And this is the multitasking interface as seen in previous uh, releases as well. If, if we launch another application like the Dala, and you can actually click on the house icon here, and you can see the multitasking interface the dialer here actually works in this release if I try to dial a number and you can even adjust the volume by clicking the volume buttons and here I'm calling myself using another N900 and as you can see in the Migo devices receives an incoming call and there are options to receive the call, uh, redirect the call or uh, reject the call. So I answer the call now. If we click on top of the screen, we see a menu pops up and here we can select the profile for the phone, ringing, silent, beep or loud. It's not working yet but it's just demonstrating the interface of doing so. Or using it to approach the settings menu. If we look at time and date, the day selector is actually a calendar as seen here. You can actually select the date directly from the calendar. So when we receive an SMS message, there will be a notification pops up from the screen just like this if you click on top of the screen it shows the outstanding notification if you click on the message 
actually launches the SMS application. So let's create a new SMS message. In this page, we can specify the contact name and number in this field and then type your own message in this field. If we tap on one of the input fields, the virtual keyboard pops up. And if we slide out the physical keyboard, the virtual keyboard dis disappears. And let's try to use the virtual keyboard for instance. We can type in the name of the contact. The virtual keyboard is quite easy to use and the keys are separated in a very appropriate distances. And you can also use the virtual keyboard in portrait mode. And pressing the shift button changes the case of the characters. And this is the backspace button. And this is the enter button. And if we click on the numbers here, and you can see that the keyboard layout changes to the uh, numbers and symbols page. And there's actually page 2 for the symbols, for additional symbols that are less commonly used. And this virtual keyboard is quite cool and I think we can have different virtual keyboard layouts for different languages and it's up to the developers to implement their own uh, layout of the virtual keyboards for their own regions and this is a very good reference for them to start with to implement their own design. And here I would like to show you the camera application. If we launch the camera application by clicking on this icon and we turn on the front cover. You can see that it's actually working quite well. So it even has different camera controls like flash and different scene mode, automatic or different lighting modes, EV, etc. So if you take a picture, it's in the hardware button. And we can find the pictures in the photos application. The photos application is still having some bugs. Uh, sometimes it's not showing pictures in the landscape mode. But if we turn around, it's shows the pictures in portrait mode. But sometimes the camera application is not storing the picture properly. And these were the pictures I took in previous attempts. Sometimes it was distorted like this or even like this.
Uh, this is a normal one, working well. It's not quite stable. And we have an application called Mini Web Browser. This is actually a GTK Plus application, which is rare if we consider it because um, Migo is based on the Qt application framework, and most applications are developed under Qt. But um, bear in mind that MIMO was in uh, based on GDK Plus and Hilton application framework and so bringing back the support of GDK Plus applications can somehow bring some uh, backward compatibility for those existing applications and even Migo Netbook UX or IVI UX are heavily based on GDK plus applications as well. So we can expect that GDK plus will be supported in the Migo handset uh, edition as well. So this is a very good example showing this capability. And this is the GPE mini browser which is based on GDK and you can see that it's working um, quite nicely. The interface, however, is not quite integrated with the Migo uh, user interface guidelines, but at least it can work without any major issues. And there's an application called Casphopus, which is actually a Facebook client and this uh, Facebook client is actually developed in QML language which is very easily programmed uh, by using QML and JavaScript um, any developers who are familiar with JavaScript and CSS should be very easily uh, adapting QML as well So this application is um, based on QML and QML is also available in uh, Qt 4.7 supported devices such as uh, MIMO devices. As you can see, the Casphopus application is running on both MIMO and MIGO devices. And this should run well on Symbian 3 devices as well. And so developers can make use of Qt and Qt Quick and QML, all sort of cross-platform technologies to make their applications available on millions of devices. And here's another example of QML application on Migo. Um, this is an application called QML Reddit. It's actually fetching data from the Reddit link sharing website, uh, which is quite popular in some regions. And you can have different options here configuration etc and another little game called quad bowling which is also demonstrating the compatibility of uh, Qt and QML.
And this is this is a pretty simple game, time killing game. Return and cut. So here's the Meagle's knocking screen. To unlock the device, simply drag the lock to the rectangular area and release it. And let's see the Peregrine application. This is an application to manage your contacts and supposedly to provide online chatting capability but I can never use it successfully for one time so I suppose this is just for a demonstration of user interfaces and it has its own dialer application but in fact, it's actually mapping to the Vigo dialer currently. And here's the Vigo video player. It's not actually playing any movies in this version. And sometimes the app can be not responding and asking you to quit forcefully. But the music application works. The only issue is that the volume is very low. Even I switch the volume to the highest level. It's it's not much different from the previous releases. As usual, you select the albums and singer and the songs you want to listen. You can adjust the volume by clicking the volume button. And you can listen the music at the background by doing the task switching operation. And the map developer application is required for developers to deploy applications remotely via Wi-Fi. In this application, you can configure different networking modes such as USB networking, developer's password, developer terminal. You can edit the IP address if you need to so that the PC can connect to this device um, via local network. The calendar application, in contrast, is quite unfinished. Uh, I don't think it's usable yet. And the format is quite messy. But anyway, it's just demonstrating what it can be done. It's not for end users yet. And there's a boosted widget gallery, which shows the most commonly used controls in Meagle environment. And actually, 
provides examples of how these controls behave. And if you are a developer, then you'll be interested in these applications as it gives you an idea of what you can make use of in your own application. For example, sniper, buttons, toolbar, check boxes. different sorting modes images zoom in, zoom out progress bar Spinner, something is loading. Selection dialog, different dialog boxes. Actually, these controls can be themed to your own design. So actually, the vendors or any manufacturers that wants to make use of the Mego platform can customize their own look and feel of their products. Notification, banners, So there are lots of choices for developers to decide what they want to use in their own applications for the best usability. So that's the Mego 1.2 Developer Edition for Nokia N900. And this is the San Francisco release, it is not the final version and we are expecting to see the final version in late June or early July according to the development schedule but it all depends on the actual progress of the development by the open source communities and so that's it and thanks for watching my video and I do apologize if my uh, English is not that good because this is not my native language uh, but feel free to leave any comments on my Facebook or YouTube page and I will try to answer questions as many as possible and next time I'll show you some more cool steps on Mego or any other gadgets that I have on hand and see you next time. Bye.